guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers, seven to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tangled Stars. Um, so yeah, the last place I left off, we had just walked into Oscar. I think his, I think his name was Oscar. I think we we walked into his office, and uh, I don't know. I just got kind of a weird feeling about it. Um, yeah, so I decided to pause it right there. So we're gonna pick it up right where we left off and oh boy i am very nervous all right guys let's go ahead and jump right back into it please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes we'll entertain you and let's go i'm a little quieter just because i'm recording at night <clears throat> okay oh boy okay i've noticed the ways you've been looking at me oh god yes that's exactly where it's going okay let's uh let's go back just a little bit okay oscar takes a seat and i follow suit awkwardly sitting opposite of him is to face him he looks deep into my soul, making me shudder. So, what did you want to talk about? Well... He stands up, towering over me completely. I've noticed the ways you've been looking at me recently. He starts to get closer. Recently, I've known you for a day. And how, and yeah, and how you have been reacting to me being around you. I do have anxiety, so... He has the same stoic expression, though a bit more scary now. Is there something you're not telling me? He says this in a dreadful tone, as if threatening my life. What? No! This is just a misconception. I act like that with everyone. I laugh awkwardly at the end, pushing myself deeper into the chair I'm sitting in as he inches closer, menacingly staring into my eyes. I didn't mean to offend you or any... Ah! In a split second, Oscar lifts me off the chair and slams me on the... Well, Jesus! He held me by the collar, though, not lifting me off the floor. His other hand was on the left side of my head, and he was looking at me dead in the eye. Everything becomes a blur for a bit as the room starts to spin, but then I feel something. Before I know it, Oscar's like, whoa, whoa, this ain't good. <clears throat> oh, boy. Andy? Andy, stop setting me up with random dudes, alright? This, this doesn't end well, Andy. Andy, you son of a bitch. Before I knew it, Oscar's lips were forcefully locked with mine. Mm-hmm! Right. Okay, that sounded a little bit more... Uh... Consenting than I had planned. <laughs> I push with all my might, but with little to no result, as this hulking wolf can't even be budged by some weakling like me. Ah, yes. Help. Oh, I forgot to ask Jonah if he wants to spend the night over at, the, over at mine when we go on the date. Uh, ah, uh, he has a sleepover, of course. I put the weights down and go for Oscar's office. After a light knock, I peer inside, and what I see makes my jaw drop to the floor. On the wall, Jonah was pinned by Oscar while they both kissed passionately. I'm speechless. They're, they're so immersed in the kiss that they have no idea I'm here. So many emotions rush through me. Hate, betrayal, sadness, fury. I rush out, not caring to close the door, feeling tears form in my eyes, threatening to come out, come bursting out any moment. God damn it! I slam the door to my car and drive away. My sight blurry from the tears. Oh, fucking hell, what? Good lord, game. I muster all the strength I have to kick Oscar right in the crotch, making him yelp and drop me down. I spit, I spit and wipe my mouth while glaring at him in fear and disgust. What the fuck, Oscar? He wipes his mouth and walks back to his seat. Just business. Business? What the fuck does that mean? He looks out the window, feigning ignorance and dismissing my presence completely. He's acting as if he didn't just do this. Sorry, can't tell you. What the... So what, you got paid to make out with him? Huh? I feel tears of frustration start to form in my throat, and my throat aches with anger. I run out the door, slamming it behind me, not caring if anyone was watching. Heads turn my way and people whisper, and I pay no attention. Heading straight home, I call Andy with a shaky breath. Good lord. Stop ha you know what? Stop hanging out with Andy. He's bringing nothing but terrible things into your life. Yo! Andy, I'm never going to that gym. Oh, god, my throat. <coughs> I'm never going to that gym ever again. Please cancel my, my member. Please cancel any membership you made. Oh? Well, why is that? Uh, because you hired the because you hired the personal trainer that does the bad touch. I want the personal trainer that does the good touch. Okay? Andy? I hesitate, but tell him anyway. Oscar kissed me, more like forced me into it. What? I'll explain it to you later. Just cancel any sort of plan you had for the gym. I never want to see it again. <coughs> oh. The world? Oh, I had a seed stuck in my throat. No wonder why I was coughing. <coughs> Alright then. You know, as you are. <laughs> what about Derek? Does he know? Shit, how will I bring up some conversation without him going for Oscar's neck? I'll, I'll figure something out, maybe after our date. For now, I just want to sleep my way that memory. Yeah, I understand. We'll speak for tomorrow. Now, go rest, Jonah. All right.
After I arrive home, I, I land face first on my bed, letting out a silent scream. Today was such a pain. Sure, Derek asking me out was nice as well, but what Oscar did? Yeah, that's right. I still have Derek with me, and I'm meeting him, uh, tomorrow? With the little energy I have left, I text Andy. Hey, Andy, sorry for the text, but you think you could drive me to Derek's place tomorrow? Within moments, he responds. Well, yes, of course, good sir. At what time does your greatness require the carriage? <laughs> Would not humor him. Around 10.30 a.m. would be quite exquisite, dear butler. Please be here on time. Butler, I'm not, I'm, but I'm but a humble driver. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go to sleep then. Good night for real now. Yes, yes, good night. Try to get some sleep and space in, in between your Derek fantasies. I shake my head, then put my phone back on the desk, and I stare at the ceiling for a while, running many scenarios in my head of what may happen tomorrow. With a little smile on my face, I soon fall asleep, wrapped in a warm feeling of love. Yeah, that's not going to last. This game seems to uh, be trying to be horrifying and depressing. Hey, Dylan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can come and spend the night. Yeah, I'm free tomorrow. Mm, stop and tickles. Huh? Yeah. Oh. Really, sca really scared by an alarm clock? Come on, just five more minutes. Oh, Derek. I jump out of my bed and go through my routine I have every day, though much quicker this time. Before long, I'm all ready, and as I put my shoes on, I check the time. 10.26 a.m. I wait in front of my apartment for Andy, and somehow he pulls up he pulls up bang on time. Has someone decided to arrive on time for once in his life? I say it with a very mocking tone. Heh, <laughs> yeah, right, and I see someone finally decided to dress like a normal human being. He raises his eyebrows, he, I raise, he, raises his eyebrows, he says that. He's right, after all. It took quite a bit longer making myself look better, and even put on some expensive perfume. Oh, right. Can we go to the flower shop real quick? I want to get Derek a bouquet of, go of golden roses. Oh, what a true gentleman. Of course, my sire. We laugh and sing along with his playlist as we drive to get the flowers. It's a quick process, and we get to Derek's place right before the date. So? So? Andy smiles gently. A true, happy smile. And he just does that for a solid minute. I'm really happy for you, Jonah, and proud. Have a great date, dude. You deserve it. I can't even respond as he wraps his arms around me, hugging me tight, and I return the gesture. Now, off you go. You can't let Derek wait for so long. He shoes me out of the car and then waves, and then quickly drives off. All right. I take a deep breath and clear out my mind, butterflies swarming in my stomach. Slowly, I knock on the door a few times. I wonder how he dressed up. I bet he looks as amazing as always. I whisper to myself, and I start to chuckle at the little giddy thought. I knock again after what feels like two minutes, and again, no answer. Reaching cautiously for the doorknob, I turn it slowly. To my surprise, it's unlocked. Maybe he wanted me to enter by myself. Maybe it's a surprise? Oh, dear. Oh, dear, 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 dear. One second. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. As I wander towards his bedroom, I see his door cracked open and his leg hanging off the bed. Hey, sleepyhead, it's time for our date. Are you not awake? I freeze in the doorframe, petrified by what I'm seeing. <clears throat> Someone is on the bed. With Derek. No. On. Derek. A black and white figure. Someone I make out, make out to be a panda, rests his head on Derek's chest. Both of them completely naked, nothing covering them. And then I see where the panda is resting his hand. Disgust and anger flood onto me all at once. I'm so confused and sad, I don't even know how to react. Tears start to peek out and my chest tightens hard, and I feel like a lump was stuck in my throat. What? I hardly speak with a shaky breath, moments away from breaking apart. The... I remember those nice times I had with him for the past month. The times he made me feel happy and safe and glad to be alive. Now, I feel worthless. Fuck, Derek! Both bears jolt in surprise as they scramble around to cover themselves up. Derek finally recognizes me, and besides a brief look of shock, he looks more furious than I am. What are you doing here, after what you did yesterday? Huh? After what I did yesterday? Damn is about to break any moment. Don't play dumb, you were making out with Oscar in his office yesterday, you whore. Whore? Damn didn't break, but something else did. <laughs> whore? Instead of, uh, of talking to me? I start to slowly approach their bed. Instead of doing what a soon-to-be couple should do, to communicate? I take another step. You make me get all dressed up and prepared? They start to shuffle back little by little. You make me waste my energy, my time, my money to see you cheating on me, not even knowing what truly happened yesterday? Actually, not even cheating. You're just being a dick. This was supposed to be one of the best days of my life where I should be more, where I should, would be more than friends with you. My face is very close to his now. 
You disgust me so much no words can describe it. I think I saw a future with you. I think you changed my life for the better. I can't believe you replaced me so quickly with this thing. It's as if you waited for this opportunity. It's as if this was a plan all along. As soon as something would happen, you just have your have, you just have your sex toy, right? He glances over to the panda, which just buries himself in the Derek in the Derek Moore. I hope you get some STI, you pervert. I rip off all the petals from the bouquet, leaving all the thorny stems slashing my hand in the process. Blood complements the golden hue, dripping along the stems, down my palm and onto the floor, crimson tears falling away. As sex seems to be the only thing you care about. I throw the stems in his face and head to the door. I'm running off and give Andy a call, who picks up very quickly. Yo! Andy, please come get me. I can't even hide the pain in my voice. That seems to be clear to him as he hangs up instantly after I finish speaking. I hear Derek rummage around his room, and he quickly runs to the, runs to the door as well. Jonah, wait! Stay away from me! Please, let's talk about this. Talk? I stopped dead in my track. Talk? You should have done that yesterday! I was an idiot. Please don't do this. He starts to approach me. Stay where you are, you filth! I wouldn't say that. I take a step back, trembling and wanting to scream. Before long, a car's tire screech, screech on the street behind me. Andy rolls down his window. Hop in! Without hesitation, I rush into Andy's car. Derek runs to the car's front and lays his hands on it. Jonah, please give me another... Andy sets his sight on Derek's half-naked figure, and his usually sunny face turns darker than the dark side of the moon. His grip tightens on the steering wheel as if his gaze pierces through Derek. You can physically feel Andy's fury around you, as it's as if the sun's anger surrounded him in an amber aura. Move. He revs the car, and is just about to run Derek over, but he moves out of the way. Oh dear, that did not end well. The atmosphere grew heavy as I let little sobs out from time to time. Andy tried to speak up and lighten the mood, but he stopped himself every time. Damn. Well, this hurts so much. Actually, you know what? This is Derek's fault. He did not check with Jonah about what happened. He didn't communicate with him at all. <sighs> I'm an idiot. I'm just an idiot. I was, was also rushed. Why the hell did I think I could be happy with a guy I've known for a month? Damn it. Andy clears his throat. So, uh, wanna talk? What is there to say? Maybe take some stuff off your chest? Yeah, right. I was a fool to think I could be with someone I've met online and only known for a month or so. Ah! Why did I listen to you? I don't realize I was. I don't didn't realize I was shouting until the end, and now my breath is shaky. Andy looks a bit hurt, but still smiles knowingly. You free tomorrow? The quick change in subject takes me aback. It just grunts affirmatively. All right, I'll meet you in the morning. What? Why? Just be ready, please. He looked at me with a sad smile, and I couldn't deny that. With a sigh, I nod in agreement, and his face lights up, lightens up a bit. And here we are, then. I walk out of the car, not even saying goodbye. And he drives off quickly. Maybe he got sick of me as well. As I search for my keys to my door, I come across the note I wrote. For Derek. We might not have known each other for, for too long, but I can say that I am grateful I've met you. Maybe we met in a very un unfortunate way, but thank you. Thank you for saving me from myself. I hope that I can give color to your life, just as you gave color to mine. I ripped the sheet of paper and throw it away. I hate that I cared about you. Once I'm back in my room, I slam the door shut, wanting to do nothing but scream and cry. On my windowsill, the golden rose Derek gave me changed. It was fully blooming earlier, basking in the sun and shining just as bright. Now, however, it's, it was decaying. Its leaves lost their joyous pigment, and their shape shriveled up and fell to its rotten roots. It was like a relationship. It was meant to make me happy, to make me feel like life actually had meaning. But now? Now I see how naive I was. How dumb and stupidly hopeful I was. It was all too good to be true. If I could just run away from all this. Just for a few days, somewhere there where I could be truly happy, damn it. Just... Follow your heart. Ka! My head feels like it's as if someone just bashed it with a hammer. The room spins for a moment, and I have to lean against the wall. What the hell? Brushing whatever that was, I lay in bed and look at the ceiling, reflecting on everything that happened. Tears start to well up again, but I wipe them off. It's not worth crying over. I'm done with this feeling of utter, of utter, uh, utter worthlessness and sadness. And Andy? He just kept being cheerful, even when I was bitchy. I'll make it up to him. For now, however, I think I deserve some rest. Andy keeps making bad things happen in your life. That's, uh, really interesting. After getting all ready, I hear Andy pull over outside, and I quickly join him. Hey. Yo. 
We stood there awkwardly before he spoke up. Look, Jonah, I'm sorry for trying to get you to talk about it and all yesterday. I know you were hurt, and I just didn't know any other way of helping. I just feel like it's all my fault. I should have known this would happen. I should have been a good friend and watched out for you. Please forgive me. I do the one thing I never do too often, shut Andy up with a, with a long hug. Shut up, you idiot. You did nothing wrong. Thank you. Always being there for me, all the fucking time, even when I don't deserve it. We hug for a while longer before we break off. So, I think I'm in the right mindset now to tell, to tell you how, to tell how you, blah, to tell you how all this came to be. Yeah. Well, some good came out of it, I, I guess. How do you mean? Well, for one, it all seemed kind of rushed, so even though it's painful, it's for the better. I guess. And... He whips out two pieces of paper. Tickets. We're going on a holiday to Rome! R Rome? Wh huh? How come? I got us plane tickets for spring break! But I can only get two. These were the only seats left for some reason. Uh, odd. Anyways, go pack your things! Now? Well, duh, we have a flight to catch in three days. You could have told me a bit earlier, you know. I've been planning this trip for months, Jonah. It was all meant to be a surprise that would add onto your post-date happiness. But it didn't quite turn out how I wanted it to. Look at the bright side. A change of scenery might help a bit. Maybe. I give him a, I give him a smile and a half hug and start to walk away. He grabs my shoulder softly, stopping me in my tracks. It'll get better. I half nod and go back inside. Well, Andy just, uh, Andy just keeps going from, uh, from one subject to the other. I close the door and let myself slip down its surface, all the way down to the floor. Images start flooding in my head, all of Derek in that bed, stark naked next to that guy. Why did this have to happen? Why can't I ever be happy? Is it too much to ask? I just want to settle with someone, to, to be happy and chase my goals. Instead, my first relationship was with a guy too good to be mine, and one that would one which fucked another guy because of a huge misunderstanding. Just fuck you, Lie. Fuck you, Derek. Fuck you, Oscar. Fuck everything. Tears start to stream down my face, and I just lay there, numb, hugging my knees to my chest, hoping that the earth would just swallow me whole and end my pain, because it hurts way too much. For the next three days, life is nothing but hell. I feel numb all over. My soul feels as if some thorn started growing inside it, twisting and turning every minute. I spent most of my time in the bathroom, crying in the mirror, not eating anything and ignoring everyone. Of course, Andy got really worried, so I told him that I'll meet him when we, when we agreed to, and that'll be it. And he respected it. He didn't text me after that. On the day which our flight was booked, I got ready. Well, as ready as I could get with my mental state. Took a really long shower, ate a bit, packed a big luggage bag, enough for two weeks, two weeks of travel. After I was fully ready, I walk outside and wait for Andy to arrive. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you super thanks, or tip if you can, it always helps. This is a darker VN. Yeah, I think we can all tell that by now. So guys, you know, uh, warnings in the future for this one. It may have some content that will be a bit unsavory to some. But anyway, guys, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!